Welcome to In Cabin. From the creators of AutoSense, In Cabin supports the global community of automotive interior specialists by providing a best in class event experience, featuring an extensive agenda across two tracks, expert led roundtables, and a full exhibition of the latest innovations. We are joined today by Gil Albaz, co founder and CTO of DataGen. Gil, welcome to In Cabin and thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's great Gil, to be here. Yeah, Gil, tell us a, a little bit about DataGen. Give us a high level view of the company and tell us about some of the work you're doing today. Sure, definitely. So DataGen is a company that's fully focused on creating world-class tools for developing computer vision capabilities. Now, this is super relevant, of course, for the in-cabin of the vehicle, um, but it's relevant across many different industries. And it's really a revolution, a technological revolution led by all of the amazing AI breakthroughs that have happened recently. Now, the challenge with AI, of course, is gathering data, high quality data that can be used to create these systems. And DataGen really solves that challenge. We provide tools for easily and seamlessly generating the exact data that the engineer, the end engineer needs in order to train or test their models. And we've seen significant improvements, both in quality and also the pace of development. So we're excited to be here and excited to be part of this conference. Gil, what is synthetic data? At a very base level, how would we define synthetic data? Yeah, it's a great question. So the data needed at a high level to create these models is visual data, right? And visual data is images together with the metadata or the information that you want to extract from those images. It could be uh, for example, facial recognition systems where you want the face of the person and the ID of that person, and you want a lot of variance in the visual representation of that face, uh, but all kind of together with the correct ID of the person. It could be for gaze estimation uh, algorithms where we want to understand where the person is looking in the scene. And so we need a lot of images of people driving and falling asleep and looking backwards and having kids screaming in the background, right? And we wanna know where the person is looking while they're driving and experiencing this. So that um, you need the visual aspect, you need the visual data together with the metadata. Now synthetic data is actually computer generated visual data that comes with all of the metadata that one needs in order to train and test their models. Gil, with that uh, explanation of synthetic data, what did we do then before synthetic data existed. Right, so the alternative for gathering this visual data is really collecting it, right, through cameras that are placed in the vehicle itself. Now you can't use the cameras that are placed in production vehicles for privacy reasons, of course, um, and there are many challenges with gathering this data. But in practice, we brought actors into vehicles and we paid them to fall asleep and we, told them to change their clothing, and we had multiple people in and kids come in. It was it was very, very large production and also extremely expensive, took a lot of time. It was a really big challenge. And so the big change in this big evolution that we're talking about here is all about computer generated uh, images or videos of people in the vehicle performing different behavior there's different interactions with each other and really solving this challenge of gathering data, making it much more uh, both simple, but also much better, higher quality, no privacy issues, no bias issues. Um, and this is a big shift, both in the mindset and the capabilities and, and the promise really of this technology and also the ability for computer vision engineers to bring these amazing capabilities into production. With data gen, Gil. So really great perspective there. So synthetic data now, and then, and then what we did beforehand, before synthetic data, now with data gen specifically, what kind of data can we generate? And then how can we generate that data with data gen? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, data gen specifically can be very relevant for two main applications both DMS applications and OMS applications. DMS driver monitoring systems, of course, all focus around the driver, understand if they're looking at the road, if they're attentive. And of course, we wanna detect drowsiness. 
we want to detect various different interactions of the driver with the vehicle itself. And so there's a lot of focus on DMS. And we've been helping a lot of amazing companies, both training their DMS systems and also testing them, testing them for edge cases and testing them for where the limitations of their systems currently exist. So for example, if you have a gaze estimation system that is trying to understand where you're looking in the vehicle, you want to understand at what head poses does it work, right? You also want to understand if there are any biases between different ethnicities, if it works better on one ethnicity versus another. And so you can actually now test these algorithms in a robust way, leveraging synthetic data. The second part, of course, is training, right? And we want to be able to train and add in edge cases and add in challenging cases into the training data itself. And so there we also help a lot of these amazing companies working on DMS systems. Now, OMS, OMS is the future. And OMS is really the next big milestone that a lot of these companies are in early phases of. But the idea in OMS is really to fully understand the cabin itself, all of the people in the car, the interactions. There are things like just detecting if there are people in the vehicle or kids in the vehicle or babies in the vehicle. And there are other challenges around really understanding the full 3D body of the people in the vehicle and customizing the airbags to be expanded in that way. So there are different amazing capabilities that can be created. And OMS is very much in earlier phases than DMS with respect to what we see in the industry. That said, it is the future and something that we're extremely uh, focused on. And we also have, we see the promise, we see the promise of synthetic data to solve. With OMS being the future, Gil, would your data make it easier for, say, me to train OMS models you know, more quickly, more efficiently? What are your thoughts on that? Definitely. So you can either put real cameras in real vehicles and pay actors to come in, or you can programmatically write in Python, write exactly the scenarios that you want and click generate or send generation and generate the data that you need. You get in return fully annotated data, meaning you get videos and images of exactly what you're looking for with perfect ground truth annotations, meaning the exact metadata that you need. And so definitely we see that synthetic data is gonna be a big enabler for this. And it's also specifically important here because of the privacy challenges, the bias challenges, and the scale challenges, right? To get enough people in the vehicle to represent the population in a robust way. That's, that's important as well. The relationship between data gen and computer vision. So your data and computer vision, what computer vision tasks then, Gil, would be supported by your data? So we, we support a lot of different tasks, really a wide range of tasks. It's from a lot of things that focus on the face. So it could be facial recognition, liveliness detection, gaze estimation, key point estimation on the face, segmentation of the person. So things that relate to the face. And then we have action recognition as another big, broad uh, computer vision task, understanding what is happening in the vehicle, what the people are doing. Are they on their phones? Are they eating? Are they smoking? All of these different things. Um, and also just uh, understanding who is in the vehicle, detection, uh, understanding what is in the vehicle. It could be items, it could be babies, it could be other things, it could be kids. And so really, um, broadly speaking, the synthetic data, it's so strong because it comes with a very wide range of metadata uh, that's automatically annotated during the generation process. And so it really opens, opens the door to solve a lot of different computer vision problems. Your data and the NCAP regulations, which we have heard a, a lot about, and the NCAP regulations driving this trend towards NCAP and towards OMS, as we've been talking about, is your data, Gil, is, is it compliant with the NCAP regulations? Of course. So it's something that we put very much in our center. We look at the NCAP and we actually base our data off of the NCAP. So we prioritize all of the NCAP specifications uh, as first tier citizens within our platform. And so you can actually generate the exact scenarios that NCAP is requiring in order to test for NCAP or even train models 
that are failing on specific NCAP scenarios. So it could be things like detecting that babies are in the vehicle. It could be uh, NCAP regulations around uh, age, gender, ethnicity, the different variables that they expect us to test for. And, and really, we understand that NCAP is a great driving force for the safety of these systems. And we see this actually evolving. We don't see that the current NCAP regulations are the end of the way. We see them as the first step with respect to the standards that we want to put in front of the industry. And we see this actually expanding on forwards. So yes, we're very much in line with the regulations and we very much uh, see them as great guides towards high quality systems that are in production, that don't have bias issues, that are robust to different vari variables and variations of real world scenarios. Gil, and when it comes to the real world scenarios, the world's OEMs, the world's automakers, are they using synthetic data? Is, is there an opportunity there for them? And, and if they did, what would what is the benefit then? Definitely. So synthetic data actually um, married nicely with the automotive industry quite early on, mostly around the ADOS system. So the the systems external to the vehicle or surrounding the vehicle while it's driving. Uh, all of the autonomous driving systems really leverage synthetic data quite nicely. And even companies that originally didn't put synthetic data in the forefront or were less uh, synthetic data first um, have now adopted and created amazing synthetic data systems internally. Um, and now that's the external part of the vehicle. In the internal part of the vehicle, the in-cabin domain, that's actually very, very hard to simulate. It's hard for a few different reasons, both because you want high quality synthetic humans, you need realistic motion that is uh, as realistic as you would get in the real world, right? You need fully um, animated humans at scale. Um, and you also need interactions between people and objects, and the seatbelt, you need babies in the vehicle. There are a lot of different challenges that, that revolve around in cabin. So although it's coming a little bit later than we saw with the ADAS systems, we see this as, as critical as it is for the ADAS systems, if not more. And we see this really as an important enabler. And DataGen, of course, is leading this and we're providing um, our data to, to a lot of amazing uh, companies, both OEMs, tier ones, tier twos. Gil, let's go back to something you said a second ago about OMS being the future. What do you see when you look ahead, say a year or five years or, or 10 years or however far in, in the future? When you say OMS is the future, give us some insight there into what you see. What are your predictions? What are your thoughts there? That's a great question. So I've actually had the opportunity to speak with many of the top executives at different OEM and tier one uh, automotive companies. And what I've seen is that their investment in the OMS systems is, is for many different reasons, right? And many different motivations and the potential unlock is significant. It can be for health reasons, right? To understand if someone's having a heart attack in the vehicle and automatically help them. It can be also to assess um, the situation of the people in the vehicle, if there is an accident and automatically try to help them as well. It can be um, to provide an amazing experience in the vehicle itself. So if someone is talking, let's say one of the parents is, are talking to the, to the AI agent in the vehicle that's listening and wants to you know, change the radio station, for example, uh, through voice and you have screaming kids in the back, they want to automatically infer who is talking and maybe listen to the adult, right? And, and change the audio station or raise the volume or change the station to whatever they want. And so there are different things that are both experience related, health related. And of course, there are some more further out there kind of uh, scenarios which revolve around the metaverse and really connecting um, to a broader kind of experience in the digital, uh, in the digital realm. Um, but just taking a step back, with respect to the high level, um, the high level promise, I see this as the ability for automakers to infuse significant improvements and significant changes in the experience of the people in the vehicle uh, with minimal cost, with minimal added cost. Imagine that they have a GPU or some kind of compute device 
There's a camera and then algorithms. There's no added cost for each new feature that's added to the vehicle. And so this really is a new paradigm and a new opportunity for these automakers. Um, so you can imagine things that will have significant benefit, uh, right? So it could be helping them with respect to helping the, the users in the vehicle um, with respect to if they have any health issues, it can be uh, helping them have a much better experience in the vehicle, automatically understanding their hand gestures and manipulating the media system. And it could be also the driver uh, itself and helping the driver either stay engaged or notifying him if he needs to take the wheel uh, given an autonomous vehicle uh, wants to shift over to the real world driver. There are different scenarios and different directions that this is all connecting. But of course, the main thing is, is that you can suddenly create significantly better experiences with no additional cost to the vehicle itself. And so everyone really should gain from this, not only the top, top premium vehicles. Gil, your excitement and passion for this is fantastic. And it, it's been wonderful to talk to you and, and, and interview you. Uh, from all of us here at AutoSense and in cabin, we want to wish you the best of luck going forward. Want to encourage our viewers to connect with you and to connect with DataGen. Uh, but most of all, Gil, thanks for being with us today and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here. For more in depth interviews like this, subscribe to the AutoSense YouTube channel. And for more information about in cabin, visit incabin.com. That's incabin.com. On behalf of incabin, I'm Carl Anthony.